Hi everybody, Insomniac Mike here, and welcome back after a little vacation I took from this channel to kind of get some other things straight that have been going on with me. And uh, I just want to say that I've kind of gotten back into working with some of my, like, what I have now since I got the new computer. I still have some old equipment and I still have, like, free software I use for recording, so I'm trying to adjust that to make the video quality as good as I can for you guys before I start getting into more recording stuff because I tried recording some games and they just look like crap with uh, just the video quality. Uh, like the last one I did was the uh, the Reign of Kings trebuchet thing and uh, I just didn't like the way it looked, like the how different it was from when I played it and how the video came out. And, you know, it was fun because, you know, I was wrecking stuff with the trebuchet. I mean, who wouldn't find that fun but I just the look the way it looked I just was so disappointed in it and it just I just got down on like you know what am I doing like there are so many people out there with like way more talent and time and uh, better equipment and skill levels than me like how am I gonna go anywhere with this channel or stand out when I'm just one guy in a sea of thousands of other people all clamoring to get somewhere with a channel. But, uh, you know, that's not really why I started doing that, actually. Uh, it's because it seemed like fun to me, and there was one guy out there uh, kind of helped remind me about that a little bit. Uh, Lapdog, if you're watching this, thanks for your... your uh, your comment on the last video I put out there, so you kind of got me to do this one, and you know I've been talking a little bit about uh, the channel and some heavy stuff, and I want to get back into it and play some more games for you guys and have fun with it. Uh, so I'm gonna do something funny, I guess. It's not really funny because you know I'm not playing a game. I can, there's nothing to comment on, so I got a joke I could tell, and I only really know one joke that uh, I can tell is everything else is just incredibly offensive on some level to sp some group one way or another so you can't really tell those because those only appeal to a certain type of people and really YouTube is for everybody so I only have one joke I can tell you and I'm going to tell it to you and by the end of it you will either be laughing or you're going to hate me that's how this joke goes. Uh, a friend of mine, Ben, told me it years ago, and every time I tell the joke to somebody, they've never heard it before. So I guess this, I don't know where it came from, but it's not really popular, it's not around, so I figured I'd tell the joke to you guys. And you know, I'm building this up a lot, because you either love it or you hate it, or you're really not going to get it, and you're going to hate me for wasting the next three minutes of your life, but here it goes. Okay, so this boy is sitting in class one day. He's eighth or freshman year, sophomore, whatever. He's sitting in class one day, and this girl passes him a note. And the teacher sees the note get passed, and she calls the boy up to the front of the class and says, Okay, young man, what's that note say? He looks down at the note, and he opens it up, and he looks up the class with this confused look, and he says, Blue plate. And the teacher looks at him and says, Young man, get out of this classroom and go to the principal's office. Nobody in this classroom can use that kind of language here. And he's like, holy crap. So uh, he goes over to the principal's office and the principal says, Young man, why, why have you been sent to my office? He says, well, this girl passed me this note. The teacher had me read it and she sent me over here. And he says, well, what did the note say? And he said, blue plate. And the principal goes, Nobody in this school can use that kind of language. Get out and go home and don't come back. And he, he's uh, shocked, but, you know, he picks up his stuff and he goes home and uh, he walks into his living room. And his parents look at him like, son, why are you home from school so early? And he says, well, this girl gave me this note and the teacher had me read it. And then she sent me to the principal's office and the principal sent me home. So now I'm here. His parents looked at him and says, well, what did the note say? And he says, blue plate. 
And the dad looks at him and says, Nobody in this family can use that kind of language. Get out and don't come back. You know, and he picks up his stuff and he walks out of his house and he's like, Well, I don't have a high school education and I don't have a place to live, so I need a job. And he goes over to the local, ta local Taco Bell and uh, he gets an interview and he sits down with the manager and the manager looks at him and says, Son, aren't you kind of young to be uh, getting a job? And he says... Well, this girl handed me this note in the class, and the teacher had me read it, and she sent me to the principal's office, and the principal sent me home, and then my parents disowned me, so now I need a job. And the manager looks at him and says, well, what would that note say? And he says, blue plate. Nobody who works here can use that kind of language. Get out. And he's like, oh, crap. Okay, well... I don't have a high school education, or I'm homeless, and even Taco Bell won't hire me. So, I guess my last option is to try to join the military. So he walks into a naval recruiter's office, and the recruiter sits down with him and says, Son, aren't you kind of young to be joining the military? And he says, Well, this girl handed me this note in the classroom, and the teacher sent me to the principal's office, and the principal sent me home, and then my parents disowned me, and I tried to get a job at Taco Bell, but they won't take me. So, you're kind of my last hope. He says, well, what'd that note say, son? <sighs> Blue plate? That is exactly the kind of language we need around here. Welcome to the military, son. So he goes through basic training, and he gets stationed on this battleship. And then one day, a big fight breaks out, and the ship goes down in the ocean. And he is one of the few survivors that uh, washes up on this island. And it's him and this other woman who wash up on the island. And she looks over at him and says, Aren't you kind of young to be in the military? And uh, he looks over and says, Well, this girl handed me the note, and the teacher sent me to the principal's office, and the principal sent me home, and then my parents disowned me, and I tried to get a job at Taco Bell, but they wouldn't take me, so I had to join the Navy. And she says, well, what did I would say? <sighs> Blue plate. And she looks at him and says, yeah, I don't get it. So about a year on the island, they end up falling in love, and after that, they get rescued, and they end up uh, moving to the suburbs, having 2.5 kids get on with their lives, and years down the road, he wakes up one morning, and he goes outside, and he starts crossing the street over to his mailbox to get the mail, and he gets hit by a bus, and he dies. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly is it the point to any of this? Well, I'll tell you that point. It's a point that you can pass on for generations to come. It's important advice that you can give to your children. When crossing the street, always look both ways. Good night, everybody.